So the first thing that we do is we revise the previous lesson or the previous lesson that we took in the previous lesson. So who can mention what we studied last lesson? So the question is that we mentioned that if you were to make an index for Usul al Thalatha, we said that you could split him into five separate parts. So what, what, what are the five? What are the five parts? So, uh, the brother mentioned that we mentioned regarding those people who don't act upon their knowledge. That the Sheikh mentioned the hadith that there are three people who will be taken or drugged into to hellfire. And from what, the first of these three people is the one, the scholar who has sought knowledge but he doesn't act upon his knowledge. And the Sheikh he added to this the hadith that those people who seek knowledge and they don't act upon their knowledge will be taken to hellfire before those who worship the idols, as is the hadith of the Prophet of Allah. <laughs> So then the fourth matter that the brother mentioned in the rewarding is patience. Uh, you have to have patience upon seeking knowledge, and patience upon righteous actions, and then patience upon giving da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any, any other benefits? No. And you come and ask me, 
So then we took, as the brother mentioned, the different types of patients. So the first type of patients is being patient upon the obedience to obedience to Allah. Like, like being patient upon the five prayers, being patient upon the fasting. So the second type of patience is patience on staying away from disobedience to Allah subhanahu And then the third type of patience is being patient upon the decree of Allah. If Allah subhanahu wa decrees upon his slave some type of poverty or illness or loss or calamity, they patient upon this. These are the three types of patients. Any other benefits? What is the evidence for the four important principles? But you so said um, uh, the last question, which is what is the evidence for these four matters, and the brother recited Surah Al Asr. So these four important matters, the four important principles, are contained within Surah Al Asr. So now we've gone to now the lesson, which is now the second part of the index that we made. So what's the second part in the index of this book? He says that it can be divided in five parts. There are three matters principles. No. Um, three important principles of the three important matters. So are the three important principles, are they the three principles of the three questions of the grave? No. no. So we've taken the three principles. Which are the questions in the grave? Who is your Lord? Who is Islam the Prophet? And what is your religion? However, the three matters, the Messiah of God, they separate and we're going to take that now. So before we, before we go into today's lesson, we have to first understand the definition of a tawheed. So who amongst you knows the definition of a tawheed according to Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah? Subhanallah. Yes. Yes. So if a person was to ask you, are you a muahid, a person of tawheed, what would you say? So then if he said to you, okay, what is the tawheed that you say you are upon? How can I be a Mawahid? What would you say? So if you don't know the definition of Tawheed, and yet you're claiming that you're Mawahid, a person of Tawheed, then it's not a true statement that you're making. So our brothers, the most important thing which is upon you, is to know the meaning and the def definition of Tawheed. <laughs> if the Muslim isn't going to memorize or know the definition of Tawheed, then who's going to learn it? The disbeliever? <laughs> so this is what we previously mentioned. Remember when the Sheikh was mentioned, if somebody comes to you and says, why should we study Tawheed? You say to that person, are you a Mawahid, are you a person of Tawheed? He'd say yes. So then you say to him, okay, explain us what you mean by Tawheed. So it's important. Tawheed, 
So therefore the meaning of at tawheed according to the Sharia is to single out Allah in every single aspect or every single matter that is specific to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether that relates to al whether that relates to al or Uluhiyya or as samad al safat And the Shaykh is going to explain these three terms. So who can repeat the definition of Tawheed according to Ahl al-Sunnah wa al-Jama'ah? Who can repeat it? <coughs> Said, the rest of you don't know the meaning of Tawheed? <coughs> if now a non-Muslim or a disbeliever comes into the masjid and he says to you, are you people of Tawheed or are you people of Shirk? And you say we're people of Tawheed. He then says to you, okay, explain to me a tawheed. So you have to all know the meaning of a tawheed. Ah, no, yeah. No. A tawheed, To single out Allah. In everything which is specific to him. In Ruya and Uluhi and Asma al Sifat. Labud al Nahfar al Ta'arif Kama the Kahu Ulama. Ma Natruk min al Ta'arif Shay. So we have to memorize the definitions of a Tawheed just as the scholars have mentioned. It's not correct for us to leave bits of the definition out. Now, other man. أن التوحيد ينقسم إلى ثلاثة أقسام توحيد الربوبية والألوهية والأسماء والصفات. So this is the meaning of when we say that توحيد can be split into three categories. أيه توحيد الربوبية والألوهية والأسماء والصفات. فتوحيد الربوبية. So as for توحيد الربوبية. هو إفراد الله سبحانه وتعالى بأفعاله. It is to single out Allah سبحانه وتعالى in all of His actions. أو إفراد الله سبحانه وتعالى بالخلق والملك والتدبير. أو that we single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that He is the one who is a Rabb, i.e. the Lord. He is the one who is al Khalik, the Creator, and He is the only one who is Mudabir al-Am, that He controls all the affairs of the universe. This is Tawheed al-Rububiyya. Tawheed al-Rububiyya huwa ifraad Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bi af'ali aw ifraad Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bi al-khalq wa al-mulk wa al-tadbir. So again, just so you memorize, Tawheed al-Rububiyya is to single out Allah in all of his actions or we can say single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is the only Rabb, the Lord, the only Khaliq, the Creator or the one who controls the affairs of the universe. Al-Thani, Tawheed al-Uluhiyya. Secondly, Tawheed al-Uluhiyya. Or Tawheed al-Ubudiyya or Tawheed al-Ibadah. Or you can say Tawheed al-Ubudiyya or you can say Tawheed al-Ibadah. You can say any of these three things. So this is to single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your worship. Or to single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your actions of worship as a slave to Him. So for example, prayer, a salah, fasting, hajj, and also a rahba, which is desiring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a rahba, fearing Allah, al khushur, humility, all of these are types of worship. And therefore we have to single them out purely for the sake of Allah. And then the definition of tawheed al asmani wa sifat it is to single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every single name he has given himself or every single description or attribute or characteristic that he has given himself. Either in his book Al-Quran or upon the tongue of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mobile. We agree that nothing you hear, but if we see anybody playing the mobile, it gets taken. <laughs> anybody seen writing with a pen, the pen gets taken. <laughs> so he said to Eid al-Asma'u al-Sifat, it is 
إفراد الله سبحانه وتعالى بما سمى وصف به نفسه. is to single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything or in every name which he has named for himself or in every attribute which he has given to himself. Either in the Quran or upon the tongue of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is by affirming everything which Allah affirmed for himself. Or negating everything which Allah has negated from himself. And that is without performing a tahrif. And the meaning of tahrif is to change the wording from what Allah has mentioned. Or a ta'atid. And a ta'atid means to negate the meaning or to interpret the meaning wrongly. And without performing a ta'atid. And ta'atid is. So the meaning of a takif is to question about the the attributes. So for example, when Allah says in the Quran, Ar-Rahmanu al-Arsh istawa, Allah uh, Ar-Rahman the most merciful is established over his throne. A person would say, How is he established over his throne? Now, so you're takif? questioning how is the attribute of Allah and this is not allowed in Tahid al-Asma wa Sifat. And similarly a tamthil which is equating the attribute of Allah to the attribute of creation. So for example equating Allah to his creation even though Allah is more high and more elevated than his creation. Man yathkur li ta'rif al-Tawheed wa ta'rif al-Wa'a al-Tawheed al-Thalat al-Dhan al-Sunnah al-Jum'ah. So who can mention now from amongst you the definition of a tawheed with Ahl sunnah and the definition of the three categories of tawheed according to Ahl sunnah Who knows? Only three or four people. Nobody else knows the tawheed. Who's mixed to the tawheed? The people of disbelief? نحن الآن ندرس في الدورة هذه الدورة ما هو معلوم من الدين بالضرورة. said our brothers this is the most important thing that is an obligation for you to study. we're studying in this in this دورة these lessons that we should be known by necessity. نعم لا نعلم شيء نافل هذا أوجب الواجبات عليك. the sheikh isn't teaching something which is voluntary something which is surplus requirements. this is the biggest and most obligatory of types of knowledge upon you. نعم من يعرف للتوحيد شرعا؟ so who can define التوحيد according to the Sharia؟ التوحيد شرعا. نعم. إفراد الله بالإبادة. التوحيد شرعا إفراد. ما التوحيد شرعا إفراد الله بالإبادة والأفعال والأفعال. من يعرف للتوحيد شرعا؟ نعم. تحيد شرعا إفراد الله بما يختص به من من عبادة من الربوبية كل الربوبية وألوهية وأسماء وصفات ما نتكلم. بسم الله. تهذب. إفراد الله. إفراد الله بما اختص به من الربوبية والألوهية وبأسماء بأسماء 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 والصفات. فتح الله <تصفيق> الذي يعني يوجه رسالة هو يتكلم. آه شوف. نعم. أريد أن أساعده. توحيد ما في مساعدة. يسأل وحده في قبره. نعم. إذا التوحيد شرعا. وإفراد الله سبحانه وتعالى بما اختص به من الربوبية والألوهية والأسماء والصفات. So therefore التوحيد according to the Sharia is to single out Allah سبحانه وتعالى in every single matter which is specific to Him in His ربوبية in Him in His worship and ألوهية and أسماء وصفات. من يعرف لي توحيد الربوبية؟ So who can define توحيد الربوبية؟ توحيد الربوبية. نعم. Tawheed of Rabbiya is um, slinging in Allah alone in his lordship from everything that he's uh, as described himself and in his. 
So even though I don't in his lordship, you know, if you hear the scraps on they know if the thing basically if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be afale or Fad Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the khalqi wa mulk wa tibi it's to single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his actions or we can say it's to single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala him being the creator and being uh, the one who uh, is the Lord al Rabb or the one who controls the affairs. That's the Tawheed al Ruhiya. Tawheed al Uluhiya. Tawheed al Uluhiya. Or Tawheed al Ibadah or Tawheed al Ubudiya. Or any of those three terms. Uluhiya or Ibadah or Ubudiya. Anaf. Anaf. That's the symbol of Allah alone in all types of worship that you do yourself, whether that's praying. إفراد الله سبحانه وتعالى بالعبادة أو بأفعال العباد. It is to single out Allah سبحانه وتعالى in worship or to single out Allah سبحانه وتعالى in your actions of worship. توحيد الأسماء والصفات. توحيد الأسماء والصفات means attributes. هو إفراد الله سبحانه وتعالى بما سمى وصف به نفسه في كتابه أو على لسان الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم. It is to single out Allah سبحانه وتعالى. In every name which he has given himself, or every attribute which he has given himself, <coughs> either in the Quran or upon the tongue of his messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And that is by affirming everything which he has affirmed for himself, and negating everything which he has negated away from himself. That's without a tahrif, i.e., changing the wording, or a ta'ati. I I falsely interpreting the meanings of names and attributes of Allah, or without a taqif, questioning how the attribute is, or without tamthil, I giving an example of creating the attribute of Allah to the attribute of creation. The lesson now is in the second uh, chapter, <coughs> the second part of Therefore, what is the second part of the index that we made earlier on? The Karma Lab. Now, what was the third? Oh, oh. Now, what was What's the second type of meaning? The second, the, the second chapter from the five chapters that we made. Um, is it, the other one, the first one was when we started taking No. No. So that's the Messiah. The three principles. The three principles. The three principles. And we said that these three matters are different to the three important principles, the three questions. المسائل الثلاثة باختصار. So the three principles or the three important matters that we're talking about now in summary are. المسألة الأولى إفراد الله سبحانه وتعالى بالربوبية وبالأسماء والصفات. The first matter from these three important matters is singling out Allah سبحانه وتعالى in a ربوبية in His lordship and in أسماء والصفات His names and His attributes. That's the first matter. المسألة الثانية. The second matter is. إفراد الله سبحانه وتعالى بالعباد. Singing out to Allah سبحانه وتعالى in your worship. المسألة الثالثة. The third important matter from these three. البراءة من الشرك. Is disassociating yourself from a shirk and the people of shirk. So when they came or they were present, they said, Ansi to be silent, be quiet. Jibreel alayhi salam, in the meeting of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
تكلم جبريل عليه السلام when he came and he sat in the gatherings of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم did he ever speak جلس he sat ومد رجليه ولا جلس جلسة المتعلم المتأدب so when جبريل عليه السلام when he came and he sat in the gatherings of, with the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم did he sit extending his legs like this no he sat as a student learning and being serious with manners نعم طيب إذا ما هي المسائل الثلاثة So therefore, what are the three matters which the Sheikh just mentioned now, summarizing? Who can repeat them? In summary, the three matters. The first important matter is singing out Allah in Arububiya and Asma wa Sifat. Second matter is singing out Allah in the art of worship. المسألة الثالثة البراءة الشرك وأهم. and the third important matter is disassociate disassociating yourself from shirk and the people of shirk. المسألة الأولى فرض الله بالربوبية والأسماء والصفات. so the first important matter is singing out Allah in ربوبية and أسماء والصفات. المسألة الثانية فرض الله سبحانه وتعالى بالعبادة والعبودية. second singing out Allah in عبودية in worship. المسألة الثالثة البراءة من الشرك وأهم. And thirdly, sing, uh, the third matter is uh, disassociating yourself from shirk and the people of shirk. So how should a person disassociate, disassociate himself from shirk and the people of shirk? How is this disassociation? How should it be? How do you free yourself from shirk and his people? Who knows? تبرأ من الشرك وأهله بأمور ثلاثة. You free yourself or dissociate yourself from a shirk and the people of shirk in three ways or through three matters. بالقلب. Number one in your heart. وباللسان. Number two upon your tongue. وبالجوارح. And number three upon your limbs. بالقلب واللسان والجوارح. Through in your heart and upon your tongue and among upon your limbs. Disassociating and freeing yourself from a ship and the people of ship is done through one's heart, tongue and limbs. Upon the heart, number one, you hate the disbelievers, you hate the gatherings, the celebrations, the festivals that are specific to them. باللسان إنني براء مما تعبدون. upon your tongue إنني بريء مما تعبدون. I am free. I disassociate myself from that which you worship. upon your tongue. ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد ولا أنا عابد ما عبدت. and I do not worship that which you worship. and neither do you worship which I worship. upon your tongue. بالجوارح. and also in terms of actions upon your limbs. عدم خالطة الكفار في عيادي واحتفالات المطبوس. and that is by not partaking with the disbelievers. In terms of their festivals and celebrations and things which are specific to them. Or wearing the clothing of the disbelievers. Or how are the haircuts or the ways that they cut their hair. Or even looking at the disbelievers and being amazed by them. Like look. Wrestling. Like, like watching wrestling. أو أفلام الغربية أو even western films أو كأس العالم أو watching the world cup نعم الكافر عدو لمن نعم the kafir the disbeliever he is an enemy to whom من يعني الكافر عدو لمن ما حد يتكلم نعم عدو لله فتح الله عليك the kafir the disbeliever is an enemy to Allah so how can this person, this disbeliever, be an enemy to Allah and yet you look at this person you're amazed by him and his actions? <laughs> but we have to differentiate between when we're calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when we're freeing ourselves from the disbelievers in terms of being amazed at their actions. So in terms of freeing yourself 
from shirk and the people of shirk, then this is an obligation upon you. You have to free yourself from them. But does this mean that you start hitting the disbeliever? Or you take away his rights and oppress him? So these are two different separate things. One thing is interacting with the disbelievers, how we interact with them. And the other separate thing is in terms of freeing yourself from the actions of the shirk and the people of shirk. So an example of this is So there's a, a person, a Muslim, and his father, we ask Allah for safety and pardon, he is a kafir a disbeliever. So now how does this Muslim child, what should he do or how does he react with or interact with his non-Muslim father? So now, this Muslim child is for him to love his father with a natural form of love, just like any child loves his father. But at the same time, he hates him for the sake of Allah because he's a disbeliever. So at the same time, this Muslim child he has within him love which is natural between a son and his father, and at the same time, hatred for the sake of Allah. So this is the second lesson. So who can I repeat the benefits of what we've taken in this lesson? The rest of you, were you not present? Were you not listening? Walls. I'm not speaking to walls. Who knows? Any any benefit we've taken from this lesson? Any benefit? So this lesson is the three principles, the three important matters. The three principles, the usul of thalath, are the three questions of the grave. These three matters are different to this. So the first important matter is singing out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Arbubiya, His Lordship and Asma wa Sifat. That's the first important matter. To sing out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship. And the third matter is freeing yourself and disassociating yourself from the shirk and the people of shirk. How does a person free himself from shirk and the people of shirk? With one's heart and upon one's tongue and upon one's limbs. And we define the meaning of a tawheed according to the Sharia. And we also define the three types of a tawheed. After this, now the third chapter of Surah Thalatha. What is the third chapter? Or the third categorization? Why do we study Tawheed? This is what we're going to talk about now. So if a person came to you and he said, why do we study Tawheed? Understand to be aware of the one that's right. Because number one, it is a right of Allah upon the slave. Because the per nobody will enter into Jannah except if he is a person of a Tawheed. Because Allah does not accept any action if it is not written on Tawheed. <laughs> because safety and security and guidance and also feeling or tasting the sweetness of Iman only comes through a Tawheed. And also so that we don't fall into shirk. 
He said, this type of separation, being far away, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that this is from the acts of shaitan. Do you want to act like the acts of shaitan? If you want to do so, then you can stay far away. So therefore now the third part of Usul al is, of this text is, why do we study at tawheed the author, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, he said, I'lam, know, may Allah guide you to the truth or to his obedience. That al hanifiyah this term al hanifiyah So what is al hanifiyah al hanifiyah is so therefore, the Sheikh asks, what is al hanifiyah al hanifiyah is that path which leads you away from al-shirk and towards al tawheed So therefore, it's built <coughs> upon staying away from shirk and bringing you closer to al tawheed This is al hanifiyah the path of Ibrahim. Al hanifiyah so al hanifiya is al milla the path al ma'ila an al shirk which is away from al shirk al mabni and is built upon al ikhlas sincerity and al tawheed that you worship Allah making all of your acts of worship sincerely for Him. Allah subhanahu wa taala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he created all of creation so that they may worship him. What is the evidence that Allah only created creation in order to worship him? What is the evidence? Who knows? Okay, so now if a person enters upon us into the masjid and he has a bowl and a whistle and he enters into the masjid and he wants to play, play football here in the masjid. What will we say? What will we say about him? What do we say? What would we say about him? We say that he's insane. This person is insane. Because this person, he doesn't know that this place is for worshiping of Allah. And this place isn't for playing football or playing with the ball. <laughs> a person takes this, this machine, uh, the mobile phone, this device. <laughs> and then he starts digging the earth with this mobile phone. <laughs> what would you say about him? <laughs> say he's insane. <laughs> okay, so now you, yourself, you have been created. <laughs> Because, so you can eat and drink and sleep? Is that why you were created? No. You were created so that you would worship Allah. So therefore, if you preoccupy your time in other than worshiping Allah in this world, then you are Majnoon, you are insane. Just like the one who uses the mobile phone to start digging in the earth. 
because this person he doesn't know that this device is not used for digging the earth and simply you were not created for eating and drinking and sleeping Naam, you were created for a particular objective and that is to worship Allah and therefore if you occupy your time in this world in worshiping Allah then you have achieved success or you are happy but if you leave alone worship and we ask Allah for pardon and safety then it's only being miser or wretched or sadness or shiqa and therefore and due to this and all praises due to Allah and for this reason you'll never find you'll never hear that a Muslim committed suicide in a mosque and this is because that these places and mosques they have been built in order to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so when you come to this type of place and you worship Allah you feel comfortable you feel nice and happy inside but on the other hand, on the other hand you hear of millions of people <coughs> You, you hear of millions of people committing suicide in other places which people claim that these are the places where you find comfort and happiness and delight and the near oceans or seaside or in pubs and nightclubs and discos why <laughs> because they're trying to use or force their body to do something for which it wasn't created to do. And therefore happiness and true happiness is in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the poet said, that the one who has taqwa, he is the one who is happy. So therefore now every single one amongst us knows that he was created in order for him to be a slave and a worshipper of Allah. <coughs> but the problem now occurs in trying to implement and acting upon the knowledge that you are a slave and a worshipper of Allah in this world. I did not create a jinn and ins mankind except that they should worship me. As Allah says. Then after this the author may love mercy upon him. So then after this the author started mentioning certain questions. So that if a person is asked these questions, you know how to answer them. So now this is the fourth section of this blessed book, of this blessed treatise, of Rasul Al-Talatha. So now we're going to take 15 minutes. Like before, like the first lesson, sit in groups like you are, take down, revise, take down the notes, memorize them, and then we come back for the next lesson. Without raising your voices, or leaving the masjid, or talking about worldly affairs, just your lesson. These mosques are whose houses? For Allah. So don't call or worship anybody besides Allah. Don't supplicate to anybody besides Allah. Allah <laughs> Muhammad